In the first part you saw that Vanitas is about to freeze to death, when Lord Ruthven comes and saves him and declares him his guest. If you haven't watched the first part, link in description. Now continue. No and Vanitas meet with Luca and Jean at a restaurant. Luca thanks No for saving his life and that of several other vampires. But No says that it was not he who saved the lives of those vampires but Vanitas. Although Luca does not object to his words, he hesitates to thank Vanitas. He asks Vanitas to apologize for kissing Jean before he thanks him. Vanitas says there is no need to apologize as they both love each other. As proof he shows them Jean's mark on his neck. This mark is left when a vampire imbues the victim of their bloodlust with some of their power. Jean gets completely shy after seeing her mark and Lucas starts getting upset with Jean. Vanita sees Jean upset and says that when Jean sucked his blood, she had lost control like other vampires. Luca becomes happy after hearing this. But Jean gets troubled by this, she grabs Vanitas and takes him out the window. No also follows them. Jean takes him to an alley and asks him why he lied. Vanitas replies that he lied to save her from trouble. He then asks Jean about her being the curse bearer. Jean says she controls her urge to drink blood with medicines. Jean then begs Vanitas not to tell anyone about this. Vanitas demands two promises from Jean to keep her secret. First, she will not suck anyone's blood other than him. Second, from now on, she will call him by his name rather than calling him human. Jean is very shy after hearing his conditions but she accepts his conditions and starts sucking his blood. No listens to their conversation from the rooftop and looks a little upset seeing them together. Then Domi comes to meet him on the rooftop and asks the reason for his trouble. No says he wanted to suck Vanita's blood but Jean has sucked Vanita's blood before him. Hearing this, Domi starts sucking No's blood, then No also starts sucking her blood from her hand. No finds Domi's blood very tasty but Domi feels shy thinking that No has come to know about her feelings. Then in the evening all five of them come towards the dance hall. No wants to dance with Jean but Domi takes her to the dance with her. Vanitas and No start dancing together. No sees Vanitas mark and asks him the meaning of love. Vanitas says when he sees Jean his heart starts beating faster and he starts trembling. For him this feeling is love. Hearing his words. No starts looking at Jean, and this makes Domi feel awkward. No doesn't understand why he keeps seeing Jean again and again. The next day, when No is going to meet Lord Ruthven, Domi tells him that Lord Ruthven is not only a member of the Senate, but also a hero who helped end the war between humans and vampires. After this, Vanitas and No come to the Queen's Palace to meet Ruthven. Luca and Jean are also present in Ruthven's office. Ruthven thanks No and Vanitas for saving the vampires' lives. Ruthven blames the charlatan for the attack and believes the attack was meant to kill Luca. No doesn't understand why the charlatan was trying to kill Luca. Vanitas tells Luca is not a common man but a grand duke who is a close advisor to the queen. Luca says that all his responsibilities are handled by his guardian uncle Ruthven. After hearing this, Vanitas asks Ruthven to introduce him to the queen. Hearing this, Ruthven asks Vanitas the reason for meeting the queen. Vanitas responds by accusing the queen of giving rise to curse bearers. He says the queen is already dead and notices everyone's reaction in the room. Hearing this, Ruthven angrily picks up Vanitas with one hand and asks both of them to go back to the human world. After everyone leaves, Ruthven tells Luca that the fear should not have appeared on his face after hearing Vanitas' words. Vanitas realizes from her frightened face that the queen is really dead. Both of them return to the human world, where they learn that vampires are disappearing in the city these days. Then they find Dante and his companions in a bad condition. Dante tells them that last night he saw someone kidnapping a vampire. When they tried to stop him, he beat them. Dante then gives Vanitas the kidnapper's broken button. Seeing this, Vanitas understands that the kidnapper is from the Chasseurs, the anti-vampire unit of the church. At night, Vanitas and No go out to find the kidnappers. While searching for them, they come towards a church. There they meet two guards whose clothes they wear, and they both come inside. Then Vanitas opens a secret path to the Chasseurs' base. Going inside, No asks how he knows about this secret path. 
Vanitas responds by advising him to protect his eyes when fighting chasseurs. Then they came to a room where many skulls were kept. They start looking at those skulls and then a paladin named Roland comes there. He tells them these skulls belong to vampires. Seeing him, Vanitas and No lose their senses. Vanitas tells Roland that they work in the church and have lost their way and reached here. Roland says he too has lost his way. He asks both of them to come with him. Going ahead, Roland calls Vanitas to a room to see something. Then he deceitfully locks him in that room. Roland then tries to blind No with a flash grenade. But No covers his eyes in time but his eyes become blurred. Vanitas tells No to run away from there but No refuses to run away calling his name. On hearing Vanita's name, Roland hugs him and starts crying for him. He believes vampires are forcing him to work for them. Vanitas gets irritated by Roland's words and scratches him. But even after this, Roland cries and prays to God to free him from the clutches of vampires. Meanwhile No starts seeing a little clearly. Roland injects himself with a drug, then takes out his weapon and attacks No repeatedly. But No quickly dodges his attacks. Vanitas cleverly opens the door and gets in the middle of Roland's attack. Then No grabs Roland and throws him hard against the wall. Both of them run away and hide. Vanitas then tells No that he came here to find a chasseur's named Moro. Moro was expelled from chasseurs because he was obsessed with vampire research. Vanitas tells No to look behind the button Dante gave him. He sees a production number is written on the back of the button. This makes Vanitas think that the kidnappers are enhanced humans through Moro's human experiment. Both of them set out to find Moro. On the way Vanitas tells No that Chasseurs once saved his life from an attack by vampires. Then they started training him but Moro's attention fell on him and Vanitas became his guinea pig. Just then Roland reaches there with his companions. Vanitas throws a flash grenade and runs away from the security gate. Then he makes one of Roland's companions unconscious. Vanitas wants to use her as a hostage but No is against it. He makes Vanitas a hostage and comes in front of Roland. And then No throws him in the air. As soon as Roland starts to catch Vanitas, No hits them with a powerful kick. Then No explains to Roland that they have not come here with bad intentions. They both tell them everything about Moro and the abduction of vampires. Roland likes No very much and they both become friends. Ronald and his friends start searching for Moro along with Vanitas and No. Then they reach a door. When they open the door they find Moro waiting for them. Upon seeing Moro, Vanitas happily goes to meet him. Moro is also happy to see his old test subject number 69. After Moro leaves, Vanitas asks everyone to act friendly with Moro to extract information. Later, Moro tells them that he does research on vampires here because he wants to become a vampire himself. But due to the Blue Moon vampire attack, many of his test subjects ran away and his lab was destroyed. Moro embraces Vanitas and says that Vanitas has been sliced and diced many times yet he always cooperated. Vanitas says he has come back to help him in his great work. Amused by this, Moro tries to take out Vanitas' eyeball. No stops him and angrily throws him on the table. Vanitas stops pretending and asks Moro about his companions. Then a charlatan suddenly attacks them and rescues Moro. Before escaping the lab, Moro reminds Vanitas of his experiment partner number 71. On hearing this, he remembers number 71 calling him elder brother. No arrives and snaps him out of his thoughts about number 71. A large, black, shapeless creature is then released into the lab who starts eating every living thing with his big mouth. Vanitas tells everyone to stay away from the creature. It will vanish once it consumes the curse bearer inside it. But no wants to save the curse bearer trapped in that creature. Therefore both of them jump into the mouth of that creature. Inside they see the curse bearer from whom this creature was born. The creature captures them in darkness. But Vanitas uses his book to turn the creature into stone. They successfully save that curse bearer. Then there is an explosion in the lab and everything starts falling. Luckily, all those people come out of the lab safely. Ronald asks No to give those vampires to him. This will make it easier for both of them to escape from here. They hand him the vampires and escape from there. Like and share this video for part 3. See you in the next one.